кажется, получим приказ. Есть приказ. Дублируем на пусковой установке. Есть. Второй. Проконтролируем состояние пусковой установки. Есть проконтролируем состояние пусковой установки. Внимание, расчет. Подготовьтесь к совместным действиям. Есть, подготовьтесь к совместным действиям. Внимание, пуск. Есть пуск. В Николаеве уже находится ядер, термоядерный боеприпас. Вот, который э, будет предназначен для использования в качестве провокации. Ага. Вот. Предполагается, что взрыв этого боеприпаса значит, на фоне постоянных утверждений США и НАТО о том, что значит, Россия готовится к применению ядерного оружия, в преддверии вот этого наступления или в ходе этого наступления, для того, чтобы сказать, что вот Россия терпит поражение и нанесла ядерный удар по украинским ага. войскам, Который закончится, ну, мы про это угу. проговаривали да, много раз. Который да. закончится, значит, несколькими десятками тысяч жертв среди мирного населения, вот, позволит э, Соединенным Штатам Америки оправдать крупномасштабные ракетные удары по территории, вот, по нашим войскам в этих регионах и по территории России. То есть фактически оправдать вступление То есть, США насколько в я понимаю, у России. нас нет. In breaking news, I mean, we woke up this morning to some very, very, very dramatic footage coming out of, uh, out of uh, Kiev, but even more so uh, the subtle threat that we received from Russia today. Okay, so we probably don't know what I'm talking about. Dozens of Iranian-made Shahed-136 kamikaze drones that the, the Russians rebranded and named it Jeran-2, Jeran from Geranium. I'm not sure why they, they, put, they chose that name. But what happened is that they were launched, listen folks, they were launched from Belarus. Belarus is very close to Kiev. It's up on the northwest over there. They were launched from Belarus, where there's thousands of Russian soldiers on the border over there. And the target, the aim of the strike today, which is almost exactly as it has been for the last few days and few weeks, is the energy, or may I even say electricity supply to the Ukrainians. Folks, the headquarters of the electricity operator um, in Ukraine. The name of the company is Ukrenergo. U Ukrenergo or Ukrenergo. Uh, the Russians hit that building. They hit that building and this is the building that is basically having all the equipment to di divert all the electricity in that part. Um, of, of, of Ukraine. Um, this is a huge blow to the Ukrainian efforts to uh, continue their offense in the south and the southeast. Um, <clears throat> now, let me explain three things. Right after that happened, and, and by the way, three people got killed and dozens were wounded. Um, needless to say that the world said nothing about it. But let me explain what happened, okay? So these kamikaze drones, and if you want to know how they look like, go to my Telegram channel. I've got videos of those drones flying. I've got footage of the locals shooting with their machine, with their guns, trying to shoot down those drones. I've got dramatic footage of the actual kamikaze drone a second before it hits its target. All of that in my Telegram channel. Go to Amir Safati on Telegram. I've got over 300 and I think and 14,000 subscribers. Please go and see it. It's it's unreal to see these things. Can you imagine you're sitting in a cafe and suddenly um, dozens of kamikaze drones? are flying low above you and hit targets right next to you. And this is unbelievable. And uh, that's what happened today. Infrastructure was hit pretty bad in Ukraine, in, in Kiev right now. Kiev is now on the map of all the attacked areas. This is exactly why China called all of its citizens to leave Ukraine. Serbia evacuated its embassy. 
in dozens of countries are now calling it their uh, citizens to leave Ukraine. Now, apart from that, which, well, we can talk about that later, let me tell you what else happened today, which is in biblical proportions, okay? If you remember, before Putin became president, he was president before, then he was prime minister, and then back to president. But he was playing those, you know, seats of changing seats with Dmitry Medvedev, if you remember. Medvedev was first prime minister, then president, prime minister, and now Medvedev is the deputy um, uh, chief of the National Security Council to the parliament in in, uh, in Moscow. And uh, Medvedev said today, Israel should not even think about sending Ukraine any military aid or else, or else the relations between Moscow and Tel Aviv are going to be badly or severely hurt. Now, why did he say that? He said that because Yesterday, some <clears throat> Israeli members of uh, the government tweeted that now that Iran is arming Russia and Russia is using it against the Ukrainians, it's only, it's an ethical thing for Israel to arm Ukraine because Israel is at war with Iran. And of course, now the Russians are holding that against us. There is not, a, it's not even a subtle threat. It's a very loud threat. Israel, stay out. Stay out of it. Now let me remind you why the, Ukraini why the Ukrainians suffer so much from these suicide drones. I don't know if you know that. But when Joe Biden assumed office in 2021, January of 2021, one of the first things he did, he allowed the sanctions, the UN sanctions, that prevented Iran from exporting weapons. He allowed those sanctions to be lifted. And that in, in, in his attempt to get closer to Iran and to maybe look nicer and then we can get back to the table and negotiate and blah, blah, blah. The US lifting of the sanctions is now felt in Ukraine. And it's also felt elsewhere because those, those same Iranian ayatollahs are selling their uh, kamikaze drones not only to the Russians, they're selling it to Venezuela so it can hit America, and they're selling it to Lebanon so it can hit Israel. So it is our business as well. So the Biden administration got Ukraine into this trouble and now it's trying to fix it. But it's funny because I'm not even sure it's trying to fix it because those drones attacks continue and nobody is doing anything about it and nobody's now let's talk for a second let's talk for a second about belarus belarus attempted to stay out of this war from the, the very beginning if you remember in in february of this year just days and weeks before the war began there was military exercise of the Russians in Belarus that were the pretext for the arrival of so many Russian soldiers in Belarus. Ladies and gentlemen, Belarus right now already decided that it is part of this war. It is allowing Russian soldiers to use Belarusian uh, territory to launch these kamikaze um, uh, drones towards Kiev because if you look on the map Kiev is very close to the border with Belarus but I will also tell you that the government of Belarus is accusing Ukraine for training terrorists to go and commit terror attacks in, in Belarus itself the Belarusian government and Ministry of Defense began to deploy rockets and weapons across the country they are getting ready for a war now if there is a war that is now opening also from that front ukraine has no chance and the assumption is that if there will be a new front of a new country attacking ukraine this is where nato will say that's it we're moving in 
And that is exactly why Putin began to wave with the nuclear option. Nuclear strategic bombers were moved, were mobilized all the way to as close as possible to Western Europe. Um, I'm not at liberty to say everything I know about the Russian preparation for nuclear strike, but the Russians are preparing underground places in, in Russia and in Moscow. Underground parking lot are also being converted to shelters as we speak right now. Um, it's very interesting that out of the blue, India and China and other countries of, of that area, Commonwealth und, und, unidentified uh, countries, um, all have asked their citizens to immediately evacuate Ukraine. I believe that the, the threat of use of tactical nuclear weapon is on the table to deter NATO for, from actively engaging its forces against Russia or Belarus. And if the Belarusians are going to begin um, another front, the Ukrainians have, they have no chance. And they know that because all of their effort is right now on the front in the south and on the southeast. So folks, a lot of stuff is happening, but a Russian threat on Israel was made very clear today. If Israel will assist Ukraine, Israel will suffer from Russia. We heard it loud and clear today. Belarus is now part of this equation. Iran is, Iran by the way, <laughs> it's very interesting. The Iranian regime, that's how, that's why I'm telling, I'm telling you, don't ever believe anything that any Iranian regime person is telling you or anyone that is related to them, such as the Hezbollah. Don't ever believe them. They are lying and that's part of their strategy. The Iranian regime said today, we never sold Russia any drones. <laughs> well, it's funny because we have the drones. We, 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 the, 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 the Ukrainians yesterday uploaded a whole video on detailed description of what the drones are because they, they captured a few of them. This is a, an Iranian Shahed 136 drone. It has serial numbers on it. It's very interesting. Folks, there's no doubt this is the one. The, so the Russians say we never bought it. The Iranians said we never sold it. And we, but the Ukrainians are suffering from it. I want you to know that the same problem I have is with the coming, in the coming week or, or, or so, there will be this maritime border agreement with Lebanon. Lebanon is controlled by Hezbollah today. The Lebanese government is a puppet of the Hezbollah. And the U.S. made us sign a deal that Hezbollah is not even intending to, to keep. Hezbollah, by the way, is a division of the uh, Iranian, uh, Iranian Revolutionary Guards. It's a division of it. They declare themselves as such. So, am I supposed to trust the American guarantees that the Lebanese side will keep its deal? Remember, there were guarantees that America gave, Bill Clinton gave to the Ukraine in 1994, known as the Budapest Memorandum, in which America vouched for Ukraine that it will never be attacked by Russia. Did it work? Did it really help? I'm not sure. America also promised the Afghans that the Taliban is not going to throw their military and government out. Did it help? Did it work? Absolutely not. Well, America is now trying to give guarantees to the Israelis using a weak transition government that has no mandate to do any deals. In two weeks we have elections. Why are you rushing to cut a deal with an enemy country without waiting for a government to be elected? Well, that tells you this whole thing is manufactured. But again, for us, you have to remember there is a clear Russian threat that
came out from the mouth of number two person in Russia today, Dmitry Medvedev, the one that was president and was prime minister, and uh, as he were playing hot seats with, with uh, <clears throat> Vladimir Putin. Ladies and gentlemen, okay, how do I say that without sounding too sensationalist? Because this is not who I am. I, 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 in fact, I detest sensationalism. But all the signs are on the ground that it will evolve into a, a world war. Now, world war is not necessarily the whole world is fighting. World War I, it wasn't the whole world. World War II wasn't the whole world. But when you have multiple countries um, engage, it's not one country against another. This is already what, what the definition of a world war. And, and when it's in several fronts, then, of course, we have that. Um, look, it's a big war, even if we don't call it world war. But for the first time in so many years, nuclear option is on the table. And for the first time in many years, Iran is, is, is look, Iran is part of a war in Europe. I mean, think about it. And the world, I'm looking at NATO, I'm looking at America, I'm looking at the EU, I'm looking at the UN. They're all very quiet. They cannot give the Ukrainians any relief because they can't, because they're not designed for it. They promise the world that there will be no more war. They promise that this is a new era and therefore all these countries had no militaries. And now all of them are rushing to recreate military powers. Now Israel, of course, is the one they turn to in order to buy defense systems and anti-aircraft systems and, 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 you know, the Arrow and the Iron Dome and even attack things such as drones. But, but listen to me. We are, we are at the point where Europe is, is helpless. The prices of energy are soaring. OPEC plus cut in 2 million barrels a day production Prices of oil are soaring as well. There's no gasoline in France. Police cars in France are now being pushed by the policemen. And there won't be any electricity for the Ukrainians in this coming winter. This is the situation that we find us, ourselves into. And unless there is a miracle and Benjamin Netanyahu will win the elections, which requires a miracle because it looks like there is a tight and, and of course the anti-Israel Arab factions in the Israeli parliament will, will probably join the far extreme left just to do whatever it takes to form a government without Netanyahu. Look, I'm praying for a miracle. I'm praying for a miracle also for America for the midterm elections, but I don't put my hopes too high because I see the trend. I can tell you, though, the prayer is appreciated. The prayer of the righteous avails much. And we need to, but, but more than ever before, uh, look, I'm telling you, I don't put my trust in any government anymore. And I can tell you that uh, my heavenly citizenship or my heavenly passport is, is the one thing I'm now cleaning and shining because I'm, I'm ready to see my, my king. So folks, it's good if we check our hearts today as we are entering into an uncharted territory. Um, and uh, Israel is gonna enter into its 75th year. This is the longest we've ever been um, independent. <laughs> And uh, it's very, very interesting. Um, a lot of stuff is about to happen, and a lot of stuff is around the corner. So be prayerful, be watchful. And again, if you want more information, footage, videos, maps, photos, and much information, go to my um, um, Telegram channel. 
find Amir Safati on Telegram. I've got 314,000 subscribers. It's very easy. All the others are all fake channels that people are just trying to scam you through. Find the one with that many subscribers. That's me. And press join. And you will have tons of information. Uh, and I'm talking about on an hour, hourly basis. All right, folks, thank you. God bless you. Shalom. And let me see if I, I know even how to turn off this.